Welcome everybody to Simple Harmonic Motion, the last chapter of AP Physics C. Hope you guys are excited. So Simple Harmonic Motion. Harmonic motion refers to the motion in oscillating mass experiences when the restoring force is proportional to the displacement but in opposite directions. Okay. Probably don't know much of what that is, but just pretty much things going back and forth. <laughs> if you want to boil it down simply. We're going to be talking about a lot of waves and different things like that. Okay? So let's uh, move on. So some terms to know, periodic motion or oscillations, any kind of motion that repeats itself over and over. Example, pendulums, pendulum of a grandfather clock, vibration produced by instruments, pistons in a car engine. Okay, all periodic motions, all oscillations. Period, how long the time it takes to complete one cycle. Like when we were talking about things going in circles, how long it took for something to go make a complete circle, that was a period. But now we're going to be thinking about talking about things going back and forth, and how long it takes to do that is also a period. Frequency, this is a bit new, the number of cycles in a unit of times. How many isolations occur in one second? So if something's going back and forth very, very quickly, how many times it goes back and forth in one second is the frequency. So if something is going, if the frequency of something is, uh, let's say like 5,000, what that's telling us is in one second, it's gone back and forth 5,000 times, okay? Okay, amplitude, the maximum magnitude of displacement from the equilibrium. Uh, I, and I'll talk more about that later. I think we'll understand what that is. Okay, so displacement is measured from the equilibrium position, especially at the beginning here, we're going to be talking about springs on mass. So how far the maximum point at which something is oscillating, uh, sorry, the maximum point displacement from when it's oscillating, that is the amplitude. So in this case, from here to here, that's going to be the amplitude, or all the way to the other side. So from here to here, that is the amplitude. Okay, displacement is a measurement from the equilibrium point. So if it's at the equilibrium point, it's zero. But the further it gets away from it or behind it, that's going to be the displacement. Okay, cycle is full to and from motion, the same as one trip around the circle in uniform circuit motion. Period, like we said, is the time required to complete one cycle, the same as the period in uniform circuit motion. Frequency is a number of cycles completed per second. So the same as frequency in uniform circular motion. So you're going to notice a lot of things that are very similar to uniform circular motion, which will be able to help us. So if we remember uh, uniform circular motion well, this should that will help us a lot with this chapter. Okay. So what this uh, picture here is showing us is as the position is to the right, the force is to the left. And as the position is to the left, the force is to the right. So that's the main thing here. The position and the force are always going to be in the exact opposite direction to each other. Okay, Same as the position and acceleration. They're always going to be opposite direction from each other. Okay, so some formulas. Frequency is equal to the 1 over the period or the inverse of the period. The angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times frequency. Or what I like to use, actually, I like to use the frequency. Uh, the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi over the period. So personally, I like this formula a little better. And the force of the spring is equal to kx. Okay. okay, now we're drawing the following situation. So we're drawing these as if uh, we have a block on a spring that's going oscillating back and forth horizontally. So for example, A, velocity is positive. And the acceleration is also positive. If you did this, we should have a drawing that looks like this. This box is currently moving to the right. And it's accelerating also to the right. Okay, Because the force of the spring is pushing it to the right. This one, the velocity is positive, but the acceleration is negative. So how this looks is this box is moving to the right. But this spring is trying to pull it back so the acceleration is going to be negative. 
part C. Uh, velocity is negative, but the acceleration is positive. How this should be looking is this block, is, it looks exactly the same as A, but it's moving to the left. And the spring is trying to push it to the right. Okay, so it's slowing down. Okay, part D, velocity is negative, acceleration is also negative. Again, looks the same thing as B, but this time it's moving to the left. And the spring is also pushing it to the left. So it's getting faster and faster, going towards the equilibrium position. E, velocity is equal to zero, and acceleration is negative. What this is going to be looking like is it's going to be at the amplitude. Because at the amplitude, it's going to come to a complete stop. But then the acceleration is at its maximum, and it really wants to spring towards the equilibrium position. So acceleration is at its maximum, pointed to the left. But the velocity is stopped because it's come to a stop, and now it's about to spring to the other direction. Velocity is positive but acceleration is zero. What we have here is it's going to be acceleration is zero whenever it's at the equilibrium position because the spring isn't pushing it or pulling it. Uh, so there's no accelerate, there's no force, there's no acceleration. And this is actually at the point where the, the block is going to be going the fastest. So it's going the fastest at the equilibrium position. Okay, let's move on. So first example here. An ultrasonic transducer used for medical diagnosis oscillates at 6.7 times 10 to the 6 hertz. How long does each oscillation take? What is the angular frequency? Okay, how long does each oscillation take? What that's asking for is the period. Sorry. Okay, let me change this a little bit. Okay, so the period. So what we should know is the period is the inverse of the frequency. So if we know the frequency, which is uh, equal to 6.7 times 10 to the 6 hertz, times 10 to the 6 hertz, this will give us the period. So I'm just going to do that. 1 divided by 6.7 times 10 to the power of 6 hertz. So this is equal to 1.49 times 10 to the negative 7 seconds. So it makes this one full cycle very, very quickly. Uh, so you can see it makes one full cycle in 1.49 times 10 to the negative 7 seconds. Okay, so it's making, it's vibrating very, very quickly as it's going through here. What is the angular frequency? Again, we should know angular frequency is what I like 2 pi over t, or 2 pi times the frequency. So what we get is 2 pi uh, divided by t, 1.49 times 10 to the negative 7. And this will give us the angular frequency. 2 pi divided, oops, 2 pi divided by 1.49 times 10 to the power of negative 7. And we get, it's going very fast, 42, ooh, 42 million, 169,000, and 28 radians per second. Oops. Yeah. Hope that made sense. Maybe it didn't make too much uh, sense um, uh, conceptually, but just showing that this wave is going very, very fast. It's uh, bouncing around very quickly. Okay, let's look at the next example. The tip of a tuning fork goes through 440 complete vibrations in 0 0.5 seconds. Find the angular frequency and the period of the motion. Okay, so what we know is it's going to make 40, 440 uh, vibrations in a time of 0.5 seconds. So in 0.5 seconds, it's going to be doing all this. And there's a few ways we can do this, but what I want to think about is in one second, so in one second, it's going to be going through 880 vibrations. So what this is telling us is the, that the uh, frequency is 880. I know we're not looking for the frequency, but that is the frequency, 880 hertz. Now that we do know that, we can find what the period is by just doing 1 divided by 880, and we get 
oopsies. <laughs> one point one three six times ten to the negative three hertz. Uh it's not hertz, seconds. And as you can imagine, a tuning fork, it's vibrating very, very quickly. So we're gonna get a tiny number for that. And then the angular frequency, omega, is equal to 2 pi divided by this 1.136 times 10 to the negative 3. So let's see, 2 pi divided by 1.136 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And what we get is 5,530.97 radians. Yeah. All right. Uh, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the beginning of this. We're getting a little bit to the terms. Maybe some of it doesn't make as much sense as you're hoping to. But I think as we do more example problems, it'll make more sense. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll be talking about energy in the next section.